There's a Buddhist parable of the monkey and a trap. So to catch the monkey, they spread some tar on the ground. And along comes the monkey and puts his foot down and gets stuck. So to free himself, he thinks, well, I'll just put my other foot down. Gets more stuck. Then finally his hand and then his other hand and totally panic-stricken and, you know, one final attempt to extra extricate himself from the trap, he sticks his whole face in the tar. <laughs> Now that's, that's one stuck monkey. And that's a beautiful metaphor. That's exactly what it feels like when we're caught up in the mental or mind states of judging, of comparing, discriminating, demeaning, and envy. And we do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results instead of thinking to reach out to something else, something to grasp onto that has the power to pull us out of the tar, pull us out of that thinking. And that is exactly what mudita, what sympathetic joy, the practice can do for us, can free us from that negative headspace and make us happier. So if you find yourself getting caught up, judging, comparing, being envious, then this meditation is for you. The Buddha once said, Thought manifests into word. Word becomes deed. Deed develops into habit, and habit hardens into character. So watch the thought and its ways with care, because what's inside spills out. Join me for Meditation Mondays. Hello everybody, I am Mackenzie Fly. Yes, that is F-L-Y, an acronym for Fearless Yoga, the channel that you're watching right now. So if you're new, please go ahead and click subscribe and more importantly, the little bell icon so that you can be alerted and notified when new videos are uploaded. Mudita, Mudita, the Pali word for sympathetic joy. It is the third of the Brahma Viharas, the heavenly abodes that were prescribed by the Buddha as really a, a system for cultivating happiness. So if you yourself suffer from comparing, of judging, demeaning, discriminating, or envy, then this meditation will be very beneficial for you. Now, I understand if you're, if you're just perusing YouTube and stumbled on this video and now's not the time to meditate, no worries. Click the thumbs up button. This will save the video in your liked video section in your YouTube so that you can come back and watch it whenever you're in the proper environment and proper mind state. We'll get to the meditating here in a moment, but first let's talk about the seven killers of joy. Number one, judgment. <laughs> it's easy to say people should behave a certain way. It's much more difficult to be spacious enough to let people be who they are. Ultimately, non-judgmental or being non-judgmental is a flexibility of the minds. It's a, a skill of not needing to impose your standards on other people. I mean, how freeing is that? Number two, comparing. Whew, okay, so conceit or comparing ultimately pulls you outside of yourself, right? So instead of looking to yourself, you start looking at everyone else not only for how you should behave, but what you should experience. So at the center of comparing is competition. This nagging restlessness that pulls you outside of yourself and gains momentum. So that there you are stuck in the center with this centrifugal force of comparing and competition, whirl, whirlwinding around you, and you just feel stuck. Number three, Prejudice. The previous video was all about compassion, karuna. So check that out if you, if you missed out. But karuna, compassion, gives you the reminder that everyone suffers. Pain is inevitable. Pain is the human birthright. So compassion gives you the space, the, the ability to look longer. That if you stay with someone, if you really look at someone's life, Long enough, you'll see suffering enough to disarm all hostility and that everyone has pain. 
And that wound, that vulnerability is the, the crack that the light of mudita, that the light of sympathetic joy can shine through. Number four, demeaning. Demeaning is the type of thinking that says, if I diminish someone else's work, then mine will be increased. Now, if you prescribe to demeaning, then something inside you believes that happiness is a limited resource, that it is a commodity that needs to be rationed and, and hoarded. So, I mean, honestly, if you hear anything else, hear this. That is the biggest lie. That is the lie of our consumer nation that makes you feel like you're lacking in some things so that you will go out and buy everything. Happiness is our essence. If, if, if Metta or the practice of loving kindness, the meditation that we're trying to learn, if Metta has anything to teach you, it is that you are already innately happy. It's your thinking, these mind defaults that get in the way. So there's a, a beautiful practice of sharing merit. And it's the belief that by giving something away, you don't actually lose it, you get more of it. So happiness is contagious. When you give happiness away, you get happiness back. So it's not something that you need to hoard or limit. By giving it freely, you only gain in your, in your wealth. So switching from a famine mindset to fortune. Number five, envy. I'm so guilty of this one, you guys, envy. Have you ever heard the phrase, eaten up by envy? It's, that's exactly what it feels like. Envy eats you alive. Envy is the inability to celebrate someone else's success. But most often, envy is actually rooted in illusion and delusion. Imagining this completely not real situation, this fantastical projection of what somebody's life is. You say, oh, their life must be so wonderful because X, Y, and Z, when really you're, you're making this up, you're making it up in your mind. Envy is rooted in illusion and ultimately makes you miserable. Number six, avarice. Avarice. It's a, another word for selfishness. So this is the type of thinking where you have to hoard. You hoard people, you hoard wealth, information, possessions, thinking that the more you cover and conceal it, that the less there is for others. So the problem with this sort of aparigraha, this hoarding nature, is that it keeps you stuck, it keeps you caught in two things. Fear of losing what you already have, and then fear of not getting what you want. So either way, avarice, selfishness, hoarding keeps you stuck, keeps you trapped in a fearful place. So mudita, this, this ability to be joyful, reminds you to loosen that grip. Number seven, boredom. So sympathetic joy or mudita combats boredom by reminding you that even in the everyday, the mundane and the ordinary, that there is so much to look at that is beautiful, that is wonderful, that is awe-inspiring. So mudita, this joy, looking around for the simple joys, the simple pleasures, refreshes you, rejuvenates your spirit, and pulls you out of boredom. So those are your seven, your seven joy killers. Judgment, comparing, envy, avarice, boredom, demeaning and prejudice. I think I did those out of order. Anyway, you get the idea. Those are the seven joy killers. So if you experience any of those human dispositions, which pff, raise your hand, I know we all do, then mudita can be an amazing tool, can be a medicine almost for you. So now, now to the meditation part. Now that you're ready, now that you know why mudita is important, let's meditate together. So in a quiet space, clear any clutter and come to an easy seat. Cross legs is nice, but if that's not comfortable for your body, you can either sit on your shins or even sit in a chair. I will mark the allotted time for meditation with the sound of bells, both at the beginning and at the end. So if you can, commit to 10 minutes of sitting, not only still, but with your eyes closed. 
I'll be right here with you. You ready? Take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. Close your eyes. Let the sound of the bell mark be a lot of time for practice. Even though your body is still, notice the world around you might be very busy, it might be noisy, completely out of your control, that's okay. You can loosen your grip, soften your spirit, start to sharpen your mind. Examine if you've felt the mental constrictions of judgment, of comparing, demeaning, prejudice, discrimination, envy, boredom, whether for yourself or for others, just notice or recall if you've ever experienced those feelings. Being a human means we are susceptible to these mental traps, these emotions, almost like sticky tar that we get stuck in. So together we'll exercise mudita, sympathetic joy. Just to combat these mental traps using mudita as something to reach out to, something to hold on to that has the power to extricate us, to pull us out of these mind traps. There are friends allies of mudita and that is rapture rapture means taking active delight so start with your body just like you would a body scan notice your feet feel your legs Become aware of your pelvis, the mystery of your belly, your second brain. And take active delight, rapture and how amazing it is that your belly is always digesting your food that your heart continues to beat, that your lungs continue to breathe, that your mind categorizes, 
the miracle of your body and all of its systems that carry on and continue even when you and your awareness has wandered away. This rapture reminds you that you are alive. You have a body, a body that is beautiful and capable. Another ally, another friend of joy is gratitude. Count your blessings. So in this way, shift from famine to fortune mindset. Become aware of all that you have rather than being stuck in what you don't. Bring to mind your blessings. Perhaps family, perhaps friends. Perhaps job, career, maybe art or passion. And from this vantage point, from this place of rapture and gratitude, you can call to mind or bring to mind the face of someone that you love, that you like, that is currently experiencing success. whether it's at home or at work or in any other field. However, their success is manifesting. Become aware of it. Remember it. Hold it in your mind. And notice if your mind has a, a default, a tendency of falling back, of getting stuck. And instead, powerfully plant in the fertile ground of your heart seeds of sympathetic joy an immediate reprieve from FOMO fear of missing out now instead of only celebrating your own joy you have everyone's joy to celebrate everyone's success to to uplift. So with that person in your mind, you can send them these well wishes. Let the phrases wash over you as you listen. You could say them to yourself or even aloud. May your success continue. May your good fortune continue. Notice if your mind has wandered, it's okay if it has. 
Your mind is designed to think, so no need to be hard on yourself. Can always start again. One more time, bring that person in the forefront of your awareness and send the meta phrases, the loving kindness of sympathetic joy to them. May your success, may your good fortune continue. Celebrate with them. When we share our merit, share success in this way, we gain more of it. And instead of falling into old habits, stale and stuck actions that keep us in depressive headspace, reach out to these loving kindness phrases of joy to help you remember our shared happiness. Beautiful practice, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on this Meditation Monday. Please take the time and in the comment box below, let me know what resonated with you the most. What mental trap do you get stuck in most often? And share, share this video with someone who needs to be reminded of this insight. Thank you again and until next week, may you fear less and love more. Namaste.